Massive news for the end of October, we have more than one third of US small businesses that couldn't pay all their rent in October. I've been talking for a long time about how we would start to have deflation and more economic pain as a result of everything. The boom makes the bust inevitable because the boom was built on an expansion of the money supply funded by easy credit. And what happens after the boom is always a bust. And so what we're seeing here is the beginning of that. This is a major big deal that we're looking at here. Small businesses not being able to pay all their rent. So let's take a look at some of the reasons reasons why this is a huge deal. Number one, small businesses employ almost half of all Americans that are working in the private sector. Now, this is largely unknown to a lot of people as well, that the small businesses are the major employers of Americans over half. Now, obviously, that means that close to half work for large corporations as well. Uh, but when we start to move more and more away from small businesses, punishing small businesses, having policies that hurt small businesses. This is not something that's good for the country. The more decentralized large systems are, the more healthy they are and the more stable they are. The larger the system, the more complicated and more complex it gets. And that's where you want the most decentralization. And so for an economy the size of America's 300 million people, you want maximum decentralization at the employment level. You don't want a couple of large corporations just employing everybody. That's where you start start to have major problems where entities become more and more political. And then you have bureaucracy step in, you have people lobbying, you have companies trying to get people elected, different laws and legislation passed to benefit them. But when you have maximum decentralization at the employer level, you have a lot less ability for major changes to be made on a countrywide level, just because there's a couple big employers that all want something that will benefit the corporation and not the people. You want maximum decentralization there also because you have the skin in the game from the employees. You have more of a lower amount of people in each organization that makes better work-life balance, better meaningful job atmosphere. So many benefits from more and more small businesses rather than large. And so when we see 37% of small businesses can't pay their full rent in October, that's a massive deal because number one, that's a big red flag for the strength of the economy, showing major signs of weakness. But number two, that means that this isn't going to happen to Google. It's not like Google's not going to be able to pay their rent, that Meta is not going to be able to pay their rent, that Amazon is not going to be able to pay their rent. This is the small companies taking the hit first. You'd want this to be opposite. You'd want the policies and the situations happening to be beneficial for the small businesses and more difficult for the large businesses. The way that would naturally work is that, hey, as technology progresses, as the times change, small businesses are a lot more able to adapt very quickly to big changes. Large organizations are a lot more bureaucratic and they're a lot slower at changing. And so the natural way of things does benefit the small businesses to be able to displace the large competitors. But when you have the policies that we have today and the economic environment that is a top down, centrally controlled and centrally planned economy like we have in the United States today, you have small businesses taking the hit. Head of research Chuck Casto, who did the survey, found these states where the rent delinquency was the highest. We've got Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, California, and Pennsylvania. We have small businesses being hurt the most, being most vulnerable in these five states. Now, one of the major causes for this is inflation. Inflation just eating away at the margins of small businesses, especially their rent costs going up. More than half of of the survey respondents said that their rent is at least 10% higher than it was six months ago, and seven say that rents have increased 20%. Now, speaking about real estate for a moment, if you've been around the channel for a long time, I've talked a lot about how bullish I am on United States real estate. One caveat is that normally when I'm talking about that, I am referring specifically to residential real estate, and it depends on the local market as well. 
over all the average United States residential real estate has done very well over the last, let's say, 40 years. But you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have wanted to invest in real estate in Detroit over that exact same time period. So the local market matters a lot. But overall averages, I'm still bullish on residential real estate in the United States, not commercial real estate. I've said that for a long time now. I think there's some major trends that look like commercial real estate in the United States is a bad deal when you look at demographics, when you look at the trends for work from home, when you look at the amount of commercial real estate there is in the United States versus other countries, it looks like a bad deal to me. I'm staying away. But uh, this is also a bad sign here when you look at, hey, they're raising rents and now in October, 37% were not able to pay their full rent. That doesn't, <laughs> that's not a sign of confidence that the people that who own this uh, commercial real estate are gonna be able to continue to raise their rents on their tenants because their tenants just might not pay. And so they might not be able to continue to increase their income. These commercial real estate landlords might not be able to continue to raise their income along with inflation. Some of the culprits here who couldn't pay their rent, we've got uh, restaurants, almost half of restaurants unable to pay their rent. Um, that is up from 30, 36% uh, just one month prior. So that's a big jump. And then 37% of real estate agents couldn't pay their rent up from 27%. So you might be looking at that and saying, hey, doesn't that contradict your bullishness on residential real estate? No, not at all. The reason why real estate agents are having a hard time is because nobody's buying and nobody's selling right now. There are no transactions taking place because prices have not started to drop, but mortgages are way higher than they used to be. And so most people cannot afford to buy a new home. Now, most Americans are homeowners, which means if you can't afford to buy a new home, you can't afford to sell your current home. So there's no transactions taking place. So while that sucks for mortgage officers, and while that sucks for real estate agents, that doesn't mean that we're about to have have an epic crash in the real estate market. Far from it. It means everybody's locked in place. No transactions are going to be taking place. And then the final kicker here, this is the big deal that we're looking at. Uh, the research, the survey found that one third of firms are at risk of closing if revenue does not ramp up in the current month, in the coming months. Now, this is massive because this isn't small business owners saying, hey, if things stay the same, we'll be fine. But if things get worse, we'll be in trouble. This is small business owners saying, if things don't get way better soon, we're toast. This is a big deal. This is a very big red flag for our economy. The employers who employ over half of all Americans, small business owners, we're seeing one third of them saying that if things don't get drastically better, we're toast. If things stay the same, we are done for and at risk of closing. This is major job losses, major unemployment, and the Federal Reserve is about to start doing victory laps because they're about to start to see employment go unemployment go through the roof jobless claims go up and they're going to say we have done our job we have caused you american people to lose your jobs we print money so our jobs are secure but we've done our job now and caused you to lose jobs which means average incomes are about to plummet and deflation is right around the corner this is a bad sign for the american economy if you have debt, get rid of it, especially credit card debt. If you don't have savings, get savings. Cash up right now, we're about to have some major economic pain and it is time to prepare because there are some major deals about to come around the corner as well. Unfortunately, that's when the deals happen is when people have to sell, not when people want to sell. And so those who are cashed up, you're about to see a major wealth transfer. And if you want to be able to know how to identify the bottom, how to identify the best companies in the world and how to figure out what the best prices are that you should be paying for these companies when they're actually on sale, get my bear market investing guide. It's on sale for $99 link in the description below. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.